Hi everyone, Dr. Matt here, and today we're going to look at the chain of infection. So, for an infectious agent to be able to move from one host to another, certain conditions need to be in place. And this is essentially the chain of infection. And so the chain of infection is very important to understand as a health professional, because if we can break the chain of infection at particular points, we can help stop the spread of the infectious agent and we can control the disease. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you the chain of infection in the context of influenza and some of the ways that we can break the chain to help control this disease. All right, so step one, step one of the chain is the infectious agent itself. So this could be essentially any microorganism, but for influenza today, it is a virus. So the virus is the influenza virus. So that's step one. Step two is the reservoir. So this is where the infectious agent hangs out. This is where it can be sustained. This is where it can live or at least be contained in a viable state. So this could be all sorts of things. It could be in animals, it could be in the soil, it could be in water, in sewerage, in food. But for influenza, more in the animal. So it could be in pigs. So this would be swine flu, birds, bird flu, and humans. So human flu or human influenza. So this is the reservoir. Now, portal of exit. So how does it exit the reservoir? So how does it leave? Again, this depending on where the, what the reservoir is. It could be in through the water supply, contaminating food. But in terms of these ones, it could be blood, certain secretions like feces, urine, okay, or respiratory excretions like um, droplets or aerosol. In. So for influenza, the way that it would leave the reservoir, the portal of exit would be sneezing, as you can see here, coughing, or aerosol, okay. Moving on to now the modes of transmission. So this is step four. Now the modes of transmission is essentially how it's gonna move from this point across to the entry to the next host. So how can it transmit across? And there's actually five main ones that I want you to know. And these are generic, meaning these are what all the infectious agents would use, at least one of these. And so the first one is contact. I'll explain this in a second. Second is blood. Third is ingestion. Four, inhalation. And finally, trans placental. So quickly explain them first. So contact is either directly from the reservoir to the next host. So straight onto the skin or straight onto the nose, mouth. That would be direct contact. Indirect would be through another object. So let's say onto a pen, onto a surface, onto something, then a doorknob. So that's something I could touch and then I would put it onto myself. So that's indirectly. Blood is pretty straightforward. So blood from one into the blood of another. Ingestion would be contaminated food, then we swallow it and we get gastrointestinal vomit and diarrhea, for instance. Inhalation, breathing it in into the respiratory tract, nose, mouth, airways. Transplacental, crossing from maternal blood, cross the placenta into fetal blood. Now for influenza, as you probably guess, probably the most common would be step four, inhalation, but we'd also see it in contact, either direct contact, onto the person directly or through an infected um, object, like I said, a pen or a doorknob or something like that. That's step four, moving to step five. So how does it now get in to the next person, into the next host? So any vulnerable points, vulnerable points in the human body is ways that it can get into the body. So this would be eye, nose, mouth, into the airway, the respiratory tract, into the gastrointestinal tract, or up from the genital urinary tract, or possibly through the skin. It's a bit harder because the skin's a good barrier, but if you had breaches in the skin, like cuts or abrasions, it can get in through that as well. Finally, we end with step six. And so what we're essentially doing now is getting into the hose to cause disease, cause 
the influenza itself. So the virus at the port of entry or any microorganism, what it has to do is it firstly has to come in, infect, colonize, get to a sizable number to then cause disease. So this, this step, step six, is essentially what is susceptible or what is a greater vulnerability for this host to get the disease. Okay, so we're essentially going from entry now to cause a disease. So what kind of things would increase the likelihood of getting serious influenza? Okay, it could be the age of the person. So either really young or elderly. Another one would be immune compromised. So things like, let's say, HIV, which causes the immune system to be really um, compromised. The T cells very low and that's put them in a very um, serious situation where they can get disease and die from that. Another one is malnutrition. So anything that the immune system needs to function well, so proteins, certain vitamins, these are the things, if they aren't there, if you're malnourished in that case, then you're at a greater risk. Certain chronic infections. So things like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, obesity, puts a greater risk on the person. Some medications. For instance, steroids like prednisone is an immune suppressor or some chemotherapeutic agents would also suppress the immune system. All right, so we've gone through the six steps of the chain of infection. This gives us an idea of how the infectious agent moves around. So in influenza, how do we go from the reservoir to enter another host and then cause disease? So what we can think about now is how we can break this chain at particular points to stop the spread of the virus and help to control the outbreak. So what we could do is break the chain here at the reservoir level. So this would be try to contain the reservoir. In the case of swine flu and bird flu, they actually destroyed a lot of these animals, which decreased the number in the reservoir. But obviously in humans, we can't do that. But what we can do is isolate. When, so when a person is thought to be infectious, so a traveler moving between states or countries, they isolate to stop bringing it into a new population. So that would be isolation. Next step is the portal of exit. So how do we stop it exiting the reservoir? So we can break it there. This would be, or you can see it here, coming out through the respiratory tract. So cover the cough, cover the sneeze wearing a mask, using a tissue and disposing of the tissue into the bin. These are things can stop the exit coming across to the modes of transmission. So how do we go from the exit into the next host? How do we break it here? So this would be certain things like PPE, gloves, masks, goggles, gown, in terms of indirect surfaces, disinfect, sterilize, food safety. These are the things that can help stop that transmission. And then finally, when we look at the vulnerable population, what can we do to break it there? Well, we can use vaccines. So this would be the annual flu vaccine, particularly in this population. I mean, we should all try to take the annual flu vaccine to stop getting influenza, but particularly if you're in the susceptible group, you should definitely be taking the flu vaccine to stop that real serious disease. So there you have it. Hopefully now you've seen the six steps of the chain of infection, how it goes from the reservoir into the next host, and what things we can do to mitigate this chain to help control, in this case, influenza and spreading this disease. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you like our videos, please hit subscribe and leave a comment.